today on Steampunk Minecraft. The Power Plant, a true marvel. Join me as I harness the power of automatic farming. Who would have guessed that with berries and seeds, you could power an entire city? I'm making fuel, I'm generating power. This is episode six of Steampunk Minecraft. You wanna play mod packs with friends, but you can't seem to find a good server. And the free ones? With the big mod packs these days, free servers are just too laggy. Luckily for you, there's Bisect Hosting. They host my server, and with plenty of affordable options, they can host your server too. And the best part is, they support almost every mod pack. Use code Double Sal at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. Right here, this is the site of my new power plant. And this farm, it's gonna be the source of our power. Specifically the plant known as industrial hemp. While it's easy to overlook, this shrub can make a lot of things. Fibers, backpacks, concretes, even TNT. But most importantly, it makes plant oil. One of three components that crafts a powerful fuel known as biodiesel. And believe me, we need this fuel. When you burn it in a diesel generator, it creates electricity. Just the thing we need to power all these machines. The windmill we have also makes power, but at this point, it just can't keep up. Knowing this, it was time to prepare a really big farm. We were gonna have a lot of industrial hemp to grow, so we were gonna need a lot of land to work on. Now, one thing to note was that this wasn't gonna be a regular farm. After all, my specialty is the create mod. It would be a crime if I didn't utilize it in this farm somehow. So I began laying down tracks and prepping what was going to be an automatic crop harvester. A contraption that would automatically loop back and forth, collecting mature crops and storing them for future use. Yes, the key to infinite power all began here, with this machine. Without it, we were going to have to manually feed all of our resources into the machines. And do you remember when I said that plant oil was one of three components to make biodiesel? Well, the second component is ethanol. And to make that, you can use potatoes, tomatoes, sweet berries. Now, some of this produce produces more ethanol than others, like the potato, which produces 80 millibuckets. Then there's a slice of watermelon, which only produces 20 millibuckets. So naturally, to get the most ethanol, we'd want to grow potatoes, right? Wrong, because potatoes only grow in the spring. For this machine to be effective, we need a plant that grows year-round in almost every season. That's where the sweet berries come in. They only produce 50 millibuckets, but they grow year round and a mature bush can actually make two to three berries. That's right, friends. We were gonna power everything with sweet berries. The only problem is that I didn't have any, nor have I seen any in this entire playthrough. So it was time to go on a quest, the quest for the berry bush. I had a couple of ideas where to start my search. So I hopped into the gyrodyne, started it up and flew all the way to the forest. I had to keep my eyes peeled, because spotting such a small plant from the sky was pretty tricky. It took a while, much longer than I had hoped for, but eventually I found a spruce forest, and in it, a cluster of berry bushes. With the berries now safe in my possession, I hopped back into my vehicle, accidentally set myself on fire, and flew off into the sunset back to base. I uprooted the prototype wheat that I had been growing to replace it with dirt. The berry bushes needed a little boost because they were only one block tall compared to the hemp plants that were two blocks tall. Once I had planted all of the berries, my impatient nature just demanded that I utilize bone meal to grow the berries faster. That way we could plant even more shrubs. I collected the berries I had grown and used them to fill out the rest of the space on the farm. I then created a sorting system so that we could separate the berries from the hemp. This was followed by the first harvesting test. Could the machine actually harvest all of these mature crops? And based on the outcome, the test was an absolute success. I was now auto harvesting all of my crops. The items were then put on the conveyor belt and sorted through a series of funnels. With the first main task now complete, it was finally time to move on to the next big project, building the power plant itself. I laid a foundation of wooden slabs, and then after that, I began erecting posts to mark the floor plan for this new building. I was gonna need a lot of space, because as you know, immersive engineering machines are very big. I laid an outline of bricks, and then I thought to myself, hey, I should probably put the machines inside the outline before constructing the building. That way I can get an idea of how much space I really need. So I began to disassemble everything. And before I rebuilt them, I went back to the sorting machine that I had and began preparing the belts. After all, everything in those chests was going to have to go into the immersive engineering machines to make the fuel. Speaking of machines, I began rebuilding each contraption one by one. Didn't take long before all three machines were once again reassembled. But I didn't really like the layout, so I just moved them up against the wall. I then connected each machine with the fluid pipe. 
one for the ethanol and the other for the plant oil. The first half of the fuel setup was complete, but I still had to make the diesel generator. One of the first things I did was hop into the mech suit and go back into the nether. My automatic drill went rogue, but not before harvesting a ton of gold nuggets, which I needed. I dealt with some piglins, and then I collected the gold nuggets inside of the drill's chests. I needed the gold because I was going to make electrum, and to make that, you have to combine gold with silver. I took the electrum to the pressing machine and had it converted into wire. I then crafted the wires into coils, and with the coils, I crafted a coil block. Just one of the many components I needed to craft the blocks to build the diesel generator. I then dealt with this illager that was annoying me. Eventually, I gathered all of my blocks and began building the diesel generator. Second to the arc furnace, this was still one of the biggest things I had built. Hopefully it was going to be worth it because building these machines, well, it was incredibly expensive. But as expensive as they were, sometimes the achievement names just made it all the more worth it. There it is! This beast was going to burn through all of the biodiesel we planned on making, and it was going to generate us untold amounts of electricity. Now it was just a matter of fitting the pipe so that we could pump the fuel into the generator. I contemplated a couple ways of doing this, but in the end, I decided to go for a cleaner approach by just putting the pipes under the floorboards. Once the more complicated things were out of the way, it was finally time to start raising the walls of the power plant itself. And to keep things consistent with our steampunk town, we were going to be using good old bricks to build this power plant. Slowly but surely, this building began taking shape. To be honest, I never realized how nice acacia wood can be. When working on builds, I usually avoid this orange block, but here, it fits in so well. I added a few more details to the building. I mean, if we're going to have a power plant, we may as well have a nice one, right? Speaking of details, blue and orange, they make a great color combination. I went to the nether to go get some warp stems. I wanted to craft them into warp logs because I just like that nice blue color. I was going to use it for the roof. Look at that glow. For those of you who are curious, the shader pack is complimentary reimagined. Anyways, after finding my perfect block, I began harvesting a lot of the warp fungus, as much as I could carry because honestly, I didn't know how much I was going to need for the roof. And unlike their vanilla counterparts, these trees, they are very, very long. There it is, in all of its glory, the warped log. Although I wasn't too happy with the texture, I didn't want it to look like a plank, so I had to create what was called a carpenter's table. Now the carpenter's table is kind of like a stone cutter, but for wood. So you place the block inside of the table, and there you can see all the potential textures it could have. For example, the warped plank, look at all those options. I ended up opting for something that worked perfectly. It was a tile block. Something about that tile texture. I don't know. I think it just fit in with the steampunk vibe I was going for. With my new blocks, I began filling out the gaps in the roof. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section about the texture of the tiled warped planks. Do you think it looks good? And once that was done, it was time to add some of the smaller details that was really going to tie everything all together. I went back to the workshop and disassembled the two furnaces that we had. They were taking up way too much space. But thanks to the construction of the power plant, there was finally room for them. I even had a couple of dedicated spots just designated for them. I added some bricks as well as some brick stairs just to fill in the gaps. Look at that. They look like they fit right in. After incorporating both of the large furnaces, it was finally time to finish the roof. I ended up opting for a nice glass ceiling. But I did want the glass to look unique, so I put it through a stone cutter and had it chiseled so that it could look like panels. Reason being, I like a lot of natural light, which is kind of a weird thing to say when you're building in Minecraft, but it's pretty relevant when it comes to shaders. Once I finished the glass ceiling, I went down to the ground level to evaluate my work. Mm-hmm, yep, yeah, that is a good roof. The walls were up, the ceiling was completed, yes. This power plant was almost complete. There are still a couple more things I want to add, but before I go crazy with the details, there are a couple of mechanical components I have to finish, like the conveyor belt. I still have to make fuel. I ended up linking all the belts together. I even added a catwalk next to the belt on the inside, that way I could have easy access to the top of the machines. Now when it comes to generators, they produce electricity, which is transferred via cables. And truth be told, I am terrible when it comes to cable management. This area, it was in need of a complete cable overhaul. You have the LV coil, which is the weakest, the MV coil, which is a little better, and then you have the HV coil, which is the best of the best. To transfer more electricity, I also had to upgrade the relays and the connectors. Now the reason we have to do this is because if you put too much energy into one cable, it'll burn up and break. So I went into the mines to go collect the much needed materials that I needed to craft these cables. And once I had everything I needed, I went back, put it into the arc furnace, and with the metals that I had, I had to press them into wires. With the wires, I crafted the coils, which we could use as cables for our power. That right there, that's an HV coil. The best of the best. 
I went into the plant, and I began figuring out the best way to organize these cables. After all, they do pack a powerful shock if you touch them, so I had to make sure that they weren't hanging too low. I added connectors to every machine, and the tricky part was figuring out where I was going to put the wires. To be honest, I didn't optimize the building in a way where connecting cables was going to be easy, so I had to experiment with a couple of designs, preferably ones that took up the least amount of space. I'm not kidding about that electric shock. Those cables have the power to seriously wipe out all of your hearts with one zap. There was also the matter of powering our machines with a windmill just to give it a jump start. I was going to have a cable go from the window of the factory all the way to the windmill at the tower. For this to work, I was going to have to create utility poles. You know, those wooden beams that have wires connected to them. Once I was done counting the spaces, I built the poles out of the wooden fence posts. I added the relays to the top of each post, and then after that, it was simply a matter of connecting them with the cable. Now do you remember what I said what happens when you touch the cable? That. That's what happens, so be very careful when managing them. So, with the first pole connected, all I had to do now was connect a few more without losing my life in the process. I know this is pre-recorded, but regardless, wish me luck. As the sun began to set on my glorious steampunk world, I connected each power line one by one with the HV cables. Eventually, I reached the factory, and I was finally able to connect the last one which would bring our machines to life. Just enough energy to give them a jump start, that way they can produce their own fuel. And it wasn't a lot of energy, they could have filled up faster, but like I said, we just needed a little zap to get them going. Eventually, the belt was completed as well. It was finally time. I went back to the sorting system, added a funnel, and let all of the seeds and all of the sweet berries go onto the conveyor belt. There they went off, in a beautiful parade of progress straight to the power plant. Now on the inside, the items went through a simple process. All began with funnels. The funnels would be there to organize the berries and separate them from the seeds. Once separated, items like the berries would move on to their own assembly line and move on to their respective machine. In this case, that was the fermenter. Back at the beginning, the seeds would go into their own funnel. Luckily, they didn't have to travel far because they would immediately be deposited into the squeezer. With the plant oil and the ethanol now being produced, we were finally generating biodiesel. The fuel was being pumped into the generator and you could tell that it was working when smoke began coming out of the funnel on top. The next thing I wanted to make was a fuel tank, just in case we produced excess biodiesel. I started setting up the fuel tank outside of the power plant, and this whole thing was going to be made out of sheet metal. Once I got the gradual shape down, I right clicked it with my hammer, and then it transformed into this water tower looking block. It was so nice that I decided to build a second one, just for symmetry's sake. These immersive engineering machines were pretty effective at what they did, so I wanted to make sure that we were going to have plenty of storage for any excess fuel. I switched off the generator. You may notice that I built a second fermenter. This is because the one fermenter wasn't producing enough ethanol, but with two, I finally had an excess supply. Meanwhile, back at the fluid tank, it looked like I was finally generating some reserve fuel. A good thing to have for the one season, that being winter, when the sweet berries stopped growing. Yes, everything was running like clockwork. All the machines were in sync and the fuel was being produced. And with all this fuel, it was only natural that we had to power something up. So I decided to add those last couple of details I was talking about and build lamp posts right in front of the power plant. You may have noticed that I'm using the weaker cables for the lamp posts. This is because they don't require that much electricity and because they're not compatible with the more powerful ones. So how do we transfer electricity from a high voltage cable to a low voltage cable? Introducing the transformer, a block that allows you to transition between two different types of wire. But before I could make one, there were a couple of components I had to craft first. Thankfully, I had an engineer's workbench. I then crafted a coil block, and with the two main ingredients that I needed, I was able to craft the transformer. A great design for a very useful block. I had plans of attaching the transformer to one of the utility poles. At the time, I was hoping it would work, because sometimes the cables can be a little weird about where they want to connect to. But everything worked out in the end. I was able to connect the high voltage cable to one end, and the low voltage cable to the other. Once that was done, the lamps instantly came to life. The only thing left to do now was to start beautifying the area, adding paths and making everything look nice and neat. Well, there you have it, folks. The power plant. A place that will meet all of our electrical needs. One that's powered by automatic farming. Who would have thought that berries and seeds would be perfect for generating biodiesel? One of the ultimate fuels for powering our steampunk world. Thanks to this brand new generator, our ambitions were now without limit. It's only been a few episodes, but come on. This steampunk world, it's really coming together. But I'm gonna be honest, for a steampunk world, there is not a lot of steam. We're gonna have to build some steam engines. 
but don't you worry folks we'll save that for next time thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed leave some comments down below and i will see you next time this has been double sal have a great day